Mars has long been seen as a possible second home for humans. However, as we continue to explore our solar system, more and more prospects appear, some of which may be even more suitable for colonization. Early Earth life was very different from modern life in many ways. We wouldn't recognize Earth as it is today if we were to look at the landscapes that were back then, the atmosphere was different, and alien animals predominated. Therefore, perhaps we should broaden our search parameters and consider the circumstances that would encourage the development of extraterrestrial life forms while we are looking for possibly habitable celestial worlds. And inside our solar system, there is one planet that might meet these requirements. In what ways does Titan represent the primordial Earth? What causes the lakes on Saturn's largest moon to erupt, and what are these enigmatic desert areas? The largest of Saturn's 146 moons, Titan, diameter, 3,200 miles or 5,150 kilometers, is even larger than Mercury. However, this is not a typical satellite. It's almost unbelievable how similar the enormous moon is to Earth. Titan is home to rivers, lakes, and seas, but it also conceals an ocean 50 miles, 80 kilometers, below the surface of the frozen surface. There are clouds in the moon's sky, and there are organic materials on its surface. Rain falls on Titan, replenishing lakes and seas with liquid, which subsequently evaporates to initiate a hydrological cycle similar to that of Earth. You may safely walk around the satellite's surface without a pressure suit because of the atmosphere of methane and nitrogen that surrounds it. However, it is only assuming Titan had an atmosphere similar to Earth's, with oxygen and nitrogen, and wasn't as frigid as minus 290 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 179 degrees Celsius. Given that the moon's gravity is only 14% that of Earth, you could even fly, provided your suit included wings. As a result, you would also see rain falling slowly, roughly six times slower than it does on Earth. But that would be no typical downpour. Liquid methane pours down on Titan, and the droplets are about half the size of those that fall on Earth. Titan is 750 million miles, 1 billion 200 million kilometers, from Earth, and it takes 16 days for Titan to complete one full rotation around Saturn. Titan and the sixth planet are tidally locked. Nevertheless, the satellite retains complex weather patterns despite having one side that is always facing Saturn. The largest moon of Saturn has a dense atmosphere that reaches 10 times farther into space than our globe, but it receives 100 times less solar energy than our world. Not much light can pass through and reach the surface under these circumstances. Titan's surface is covered in a light orange haze for the first part of its day, which is equal to 16 Earth days. It would be like attempting to see through dense fire smoke to look through this veil. The sky at this time of day may be 100 to 1000 times darker than it is in the afternoon on our planet. And the remaining portion of the day exposes the Earth to complete darkness. However, the haze would prevent you from seeing Saturn from the Titan surface, even if it were bright enough. It's interesting to note that the Moon doesn't shine its brightest during the day. Computer simulations indicate that twilight, when the light is up to 200 times brighter than during the day, is the brightest moment on this enigmatic planet. This phenomenon can be attributed to the way atmospheric haze particles scatter light. Additionally, because Titan is tidally locked, having a perpetual dayside and nightside, there is also a permanent twilight zone, or terminator, which is the border between the two sides. Similar to Earth, Titan may have eclipses that last up to six hours. This is similar to spending two nights in a row during the day. Naturally, you would only be aware of it if you were facing Saturn from the side of the Titan. If not, a solar eclipse would take place at night. Knowing this is crucial because it informs scientists about the amount of light that Titan's surface and atmosphere receive from the Sun, which determines the kinds of conditions that any hypothetical life on Titan would have to endure. The clouds that form in Titan's lower atmosphere during late summer, when its surface absorbs more heat, were recently seen by the James Webb Space Telescope. This implies that, as scientists have predicted, the Moon has seasonal weather patterns. Because of their similar tilts to the Sun and Moon, Titan and Saturn both have seasons that last roughly the same amount of time and alternate every seven Earth years. Titan's weather is subject to seasonal variations, albeit slowly. A curious phenomenon occurs when the Earth's axis is neither tilted toward nor away from the Sun. Imagine a line slicing across the planet's north and south poles, cutting it in half. Around the Earth, day and night are roughly equal in length during this twice-yearly period. Titan also undergoes this event, known as the equinox, though less frequently, roughly every 15 years. However, at this time of year, massive methane clouds build in the equatorial parts of the Moon, causing violent windstorms. On Titan, the summertime winds are more intense. Scientists observed waves on Titan's lakes during the Cassini mission, and they were distinct from waves on Earth. 
These waves are approximately seven times taller than those in the Earth's oceans due to Titan's weak gravity. However, their movement is up to three times slower. Strong dust storms are also fueled by Titan's winds. Similar occurrences occur in arid regions of the Earth when large dust clouds build just prior to storms. Mars is the only other location in the solar system where this phenomenon has been observed. This is how organic materials on Titan's surface are dispersed throughout in the form of dust. On Saturn's largest moon, downpours are an uncommon occurrence, but when they do occur, they leave an intriguing trail. Titan's showers are intense and significantly affect the surface. What they produce is referred to as alluvial fans. These formations resemble heaps of stones and soil in the form of triangles. They are created when ice or water moves and deposits the objects it was carrying behind. On Titan, dune fields that cover up to 13% of the moon's surface have also been observed by scientists. They are gigantic, measuring hundreds of miles long, 1.2 miles, 2 kilometers, broad, and 330 feet, 100 m, high, in comparison to sand dunes found on Earth. Titan has more sand than any other place that we are aware of, yet unlike the sand on Earth, Titan's sand isn't composed of silicates. Rather, it is composed of solid hydrocarbons that descend from the atmosphere, akin to rain. We know that landforms are formed on Earth by a simple process, small grains of rock are broken down into smaller pieces, which are then carried by the wind to particular locations where they accumulate and finally shape the land. However, things are even more confusing on Saturn's largest moon. Because Titan sand grains differ greatly from Earth's, the genesis of its landforms has remained a mystery. They are considered to be more transient and weaker. Nevertheless, we have seen persistent sand dunes on Titan despite this. Sand grains should crash into one another and the surface when they are carried by the wind, which gradually reduces their size. How, therefore, do these grains survive long enough to create meaningful landforms? After examining Titan's terrain, scientists made an intriguing discovery. It turns out that there is a unique kind of sedimentary process called sintering on the moon, when nearby grains collide and fuse to form bigger, stronger fragments that are less likely to be carried away by the wind. Could life have adapted in a similar way if the sand on Titan could adapt to create such intricate landforms? There are numerous parallels between this distant extraterrestrial world and our home planet. Titan seems to have the improper ingredients, which is an issue. Water on Earth is made up of liquid ethane and methane, which are found in all of its lakes, rivers, clouds, and oceans. However, this celestial body is undoubtedly still active. Even the liquids that flow on Titan's surface go through intricate physical processes. Methane lakes on Titan can stratify, or form strata, based on variations in density, just as other water bodies on Earth. Furthermore, there is a chance that the liquid ethane and methane lakes will erupt. The combination of methane, ethane, and nitrogen causes bubbles to form within the liquid bodies of the Moon that are strong enough to form river deltas. Comprehending the formation of bubbles in Titan's lakes facilitates scientists' investigation of the behavior of liquids on this fascinating Moon. What if, one day, a submarine was dispatched to investigate Titan's lakes? It might actually generate an eruption of bubbles, similar to the ones that scientists have found, if it emits heat. Thus, these discoveries provide information about Titan while also raising the possibility of some unexpected difficulties that a future mission may face in those extraterrestrial waters. Whatever life forms might exist, they would have a totally different biology, which would cause them to behave and appear unlike anything we have ever seen. A group of Cornell University scientists have shown that the current conditions on Titan could lead to the formation of cell membranes. On Earth, unique chemicals known as phospholipids make up cell membranes. Consider that these molecules consist of a head and a tail. The head has a positive and a negative side, much like a magnet. There is no magnetic property to the tail since it is neutral. Think of these molecules in water as two slices of bread sandwiched together. The molecular heads are oriented outward because they enjoy the water, much like the outer surfaces of bread. However, the molecules' tails resemble the interior of bread, so they hide in the middle because they wish to avoid the water. The membrane is made flexible by this structure, which is essential to life. A membrane akin to this would likely be required if life existed on Titan. Titan lacks the proper circumstances to form these Earth-like membranes because methane has a uniform distribution of electrical charges. As a result, life on Titan would need to develop new means of constructing its cell walls. However, inside-out membranes in such nonpolar liquids have been produced in a lab by scientists. Additionally, they think that the structure of Titanian cell membranes would be comparable. The liquids of Saturn's largest moon most likely lack phosphorus and oxygen and are too cold for phospholipids, thus, they would have to be made of something else. What sort of chemical, therefore, might this be? 
The Titanian atmosphere is primarily composed of nitrogen and methane, although it also contains traces of other substances. According to computer simulations, a material known as acrylonitrile might develop into cell membranes in Titan's nonpolar liquid methane. About 10 parts per million of acrylonitrile have previously been found in the Moon's atmosphere by the Cassini mission. Though the temperatures at which Titanian membranes and Earth-like membranes can develop are very different, they both have unexpectedly similar properties, such as internal resistance to external force and stability. It is therefore feasible for membranes to form and persist in the icy lakes of Titan. The prospect of a life based on methane would completely alter our perspective. Rather than concentrating only on planets within the habitable zone of stars, which have characteristics similar to Earth, we would also investigate worlds that are farther away from their stars and where liquid methane can exist. The number of possible locations for alien life forms would explode inside our galaxy alone. And if life has endured long enough on some of these worlds to give rise to complex species, we may discover a living equivalent of a fantastical creature like those described in science fiction literature and motion pictures. Even though Titan's surface is uninhabitable at this point in its history, there is a subterranean ocean of liquid water concealed beneath the frozen surface of the Moon. Researchers are attempting to determine whether organic materials can pass through this ice shell and enter the water. The water beneath the surface might be habitable if this is a common occurrence on Titan. However, there are still many things about this global ocean that we don't know, including its temperature, composition, density, and interactions with the icy crust above. Whether there is a chemical energy source below to support metabolism is another important subject. However, a single bacterium that has been discovered to have a unique metabolism on Earth might be able to survive in the Titan subterranean ocean. A life cycle was initiated by the high concentrations of nitrogen, CO2, and water vapor in the Earth's atmosphere billions of years ago, when the vapor sank to the surface. It's possible that the elements we detect on Titan today were once the building blocks of life on Earth. In a sense, the largest satellite of Saturn serves as a living laboratory for astrobiologists to investigate the potential roles these components may have had in the origin of life on Earth. In a few million or billion years, the Moon might change into a livable planet teeming with creatures that are similar to those on Earth. We might learn the answers to these queries soon. NASA's Dragonfly robotic helicopter is scheduled to launch in June 2027 and will look for hydrocarbon or water biosignatures that may be present on Saturn's massive satellite. Scientists anticipate that Dragonfly's arrival will provide new insights on Titan's subterranean ocean, its potential habitability, and whether or not life itself may exist on this far-off planet. What would these alien species be like if we found evidence of their presence on Titan? Comment with your ideas below, and check back often to learn about the exciting discoveries that space has for us. I appreciate you seeing.